disgrace before the people. I'm going to be disgraced before my peers. And I'm going to feel this reproach before my countrymen. Because of that, they are afraid of what has not come. Because they think it may come. But the Lord is saying, there's nothing to fear. Because that reproach will not come. And that shame will not come. And that calamity will not come because of that. He says, fear not, because you will not see the shame. You will not be ashamed. Neither shalt thou be confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And shall not, and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Look at verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Isn't that what people are afraid of every time? They are afraid of witches, of wizards, of weapons of darkness. They are afraid of the sea, of the ocean, of the forest, of what goes on in the village. They are afraid of what the enemies are planning against them. The plot and all those things that those enemies are saying will get him down. But they cannot do it. Because it says, no weapon that is passioned against you, formed against you can prosper. And then it says, every tongue, every what? Tell me out loud. The strong and the weak, the magical and the idolatrous, every tongue, whatever they are, wherever they are coming from, however sharp that tongue may be, and however demonic or devilish that tongue may be, it says, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, Thou shalt condemn. And then it says, This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And so you see why the Lord is telling us, He says, Fear not, He is for us, He is by us, He is supporting us, and He is supplying all our needs. And because of that, He says, There is nothing to fear from tonight. You'll not be afraid in Jesus' name. I want to find out, number one, what's the definition of the description of fear? The definition and description of fear. Because if you don't know what fear is all about, you might have it and not know that you have it. And when it's trying to knock at the door and it's trying to come in, you will not know that that is fear coming in because it may disguise itself and you will not know. And here you're saying, I will not fear, I will not fear. And fear is knocking at the door and you're opening the door and it's entering in and you're still saying, I will not fear. What then is the definition of fear, the description of fear? Number two, we're looking at divine declaration to the fearful. If you're fearful, you're timid, it looks like, you know, your knees are shaking every time. And your mind is kind of oppressed every time. You're under fear and intimidation every time. What's the declaration of God for you or to you? The divine declaration to the fearful. Number three is deliverance and dominion over fear. We're going to overcome. Deliverance from fear and dominion over fear. Now, this point, number one, is very important. Everything is important. But number one is so important, the definition and the description of fear. What is fear? You're going to do a lot of writing. Are you there? Do you have your virus, pens, pens up? I want to see. Uh-huh. Pens down. You remember? What's fear? Now, you spell that fear, F-E-A-R. What's fear? False experience appearing real it's not real it's not real it appears real and because of that many people are afraid and they are afraid of shadows they are afraid of mirage they are afraid of something a fantasy something that is not really there i want you to look at second kings chapter three second kings chapter three and I'm reading from verse 22, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 22. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. They were on the battlefield, and there was a river nearby. And they were preparing, they were ready to take on the enemy all of a sudden in the morning. And you know how the sun is in the morning. 
it's not as bright it's not as white it's like almost yellow and red together purple together and when they saw the sun shining on the river look at what they said it looked like blood in verse 23 and they said this is what was that blood no it was water that's just false experience appearing real that made them afraid remember they were on the battlefield and remember as they were on the battlefield wanting to engage the other part of the army then they saw a pool of what they thought was a pool of blood and they said all the people are dead something has happened something mysterious has happened to them and all of them are dead and the decision they took they took that decision on the basis of what they saw and they thought it was blood how many times you have acted like that and you thought you saw something real and it's just something that was a kind of a mirage a kind of shadow in your heart and then your interpretation said it was a demon your interpretation said this is satan your interpretation said they have come again those are the enemies they are going to take me on and when there was nothing to fear you were afraid and sometimes it's not even prayer and it's not fasting it's just to think about it and look at it very carefully and look at it again let somebody get near this water and pick up and draw some water out of that you are going to see it is not blood at all but without looking at anything or examining anything they said this is blood and the decision that followed after that was that, you know, just fell. There's no fighting anymore. All the people are dead. And they walked into the enemy territory without their weapons on. They were all dead before the following day. False experience appearing real. We're looking at Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Here we find uh, the people of Syria, the army, they were fighting against the children of Israel. And as we're fighting against the children of Israel, look at what happened in verse 6, chapter 7, verse 6. And the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and did what? And they fled. The king, if you read the whole story, this is the time when Elisha said, By this time tomorrow, we'll sell the, uh, the wheat and all the things they're going to eat. We'll sell it at the gate for a cheap price. And the man leaning on the right hand side of the king said, That cannot be, even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven. And then Elisha said, You'll see it with your eyes, but you'll not eat out of it. And the following morning, this uh, king with his army, they heard a blast. It's like a bombshell. And he said, the king of Israel. And the king of Israel, by the way, is at home. is in his palace, fearful, afraid. Because when the lepers, when they went in there, and they saw the food, and they get and they said, we're not doing well. Let's go to the king and give him information. When they informed the king, the king himself was afraid. And he said, I know what those people have done. They want to deceive us, and they are somewhere. And then when we go out, because they know we're hungry, they're going to pounce on us and kill us. Now, he was afraid. They were afraid because they had something. And what they had was not real. And he said, we're very sure. You are the one that makes the conclusion yourself. And then you begin to paint the picture. I'm gone. I'm through. I'm dead. They have come to take me, and there's nobody running after you. And we're just fearing because it's false experience appearing real. Number two, faceless enemies afflicting reason. Faceless enemies. That's fear. Faithless enemies afflicting reason. That is, your reasoning faculty is afflicted because of faceless enemies. Enemies that you don't see. Enemies that are not there. And how many times we are praying, I will say, God, destroy those enemies. And where are they? Lord, get rid of them. 
and then we fast and pray and cast out and cast off and whatever and those enemies were fighting their faceless enemies but they afflict our reasoning we're not able to reason well because we think the enemy is there the enemy is there the enemy is there look at psalm 53 verse 